Welcome to our channel. Today, we will take you on a perilous journey into the dark recesses of a criminal mind. This is the story of John Edward Robinson, a man whose seemingly ordinary life concealed secrets as terrifying as the deepest abyss of human depravity. John Robinson was born on December 27, 1943, in Cicero, Illinois, the third of five children to Henry and Alberta Robinson. His father struggled with alcoholism, while his mother maintained a strict disciplinary approach. Despite a challenging family environment, Robinson achieved the rank of Eagle Scout by the age of 13. Simultaneously, he entered a Catholic preparatory seminary, expressing a desire to become a priest. However, he left after his freshman year due to academic struggles and disciplinary issues. Opting for trade school to study radiology, he didn't complete the program but secured a job as an X-ray technician at a children's hospital in Kansas City, Missouri, using forged credentials. At 21, Robinson married Nancy Jo Lynch, and they had a son and fraternal twins. In 1966, he was dismissed from his job for incompetence, but secured a similar position. At a medical practice where he embezzled tens of thousands of dollars and engaged in illicit relationships with staff and patients, in 1969, he faced legal consequences, receiving a three-year probation sentence. Within a year, he violated probation by returning to Chicago. Despite multiple convictions for theft, fraud, and embezzlement between 1969 and 1991, Robinson managed to work for charitable organizations and assume civic roles. In 1977, while employed by a handicapped service organization, he deceitfully joined its board of directors and created a self-awarded Man of the Year accolade, exposed later by the media for forged recommendation. Though the press unveiled Robinson as a fraud, the major repercussions seemed to fall on his wife and children. Robinson's suspected involvement in his first murder surfaced in 1984 when he hired 19-year-old Paula Godfrey for a sales representative role in two fictitious companies, part of his scheme to fabricate credentials. After allegedly sending her for training, she disappeared and her family received a letter purportedly from her, stating she was fine but didn't want contact, as she was of legal age and no signs of foul play were evident, no investigation ensued. In 1983, John Robinson's criminal activities took a sinister turn. His brother Don Robinson and sister-in-law, Helen, struggling with infertility and unsuccessful adoption attempts, became targets of Robinson's deceptive schemes. Posing as a facilitator in the adoption business, Robinson sought single pregnant women for potential involvement in the black market adoption. Failing to obtain referrals from social services, he directly approached 19-year-old Lisa Stasey, a single mother residing in a battered women's shelter in January 1985 under the alias Josh Osborne. He convinced Stasi that she would undergo a training program in Texas, including daycare and job training. On January 9, Robinson visited Stasi's sister's home, picking up her infant daughter, Tiffany. The following day, Stasi's family received a distressing call from her stating she was deemed an unfit mother and her mother wanted custody of the baby. The call abruptly ended with the words, here they come. No one heard from Lisa again. Two days later, Robinson handed Tiffany to his brother, accompanied by forged adoption documents, falsely claiming the child's mother had committed suicide. Stacy's family reported her missing, and Robinson faced investigation for violating the Mann Act, initially focused on preventing white slavery and transporting women across state lines for immoral purposes. As Robinson's probation came under scrutiny, he became deeply involved in the underground sex industry, particularly SLEM-related prostitution. The FBI deployed an undercover agent posing as a potential prostitute for Robinson, but concerns for her safety led to her withdrawal. A critical witness in Robinson's probation violation trial was a prostitute named Teresa, also his mistress, who faced threats from Robinson, including a loaded gun incident. Robinson's intimidation tactics resulted in Teresa's safe custody, preventing her testimony and favoring Robinson in court. In 1987, Robinson was imprisoned for theft and released in 1993. Embracing the internet, he adopted the alias slave master and exploited BDSM, related chat rooms, becoming the first known serial killer to use the internet for victim hunting. 
Meanwhile, his wife supported the family by managing a trailer park after their suburban home loss. Robinson's first victim in this period was Beverly Bonner, whom he seduced, convinced to relocate, and then disappeared, cashing her alimony checks. In 1994, Robinson connected with Sheila Faith online, promising work and care for her disabled daughter, Debbie. After moving to Kansas City, both mother and daughter were killed, and Faith's pension checks were cashed. In 1997, Robinson targeted Polish immigrant Isabella Lewicka through a BDSEM contact site, exploiting her trust and later killing her in 1999. Suzette Troutam, a nurse and submissive from a BDSM site, became Robinson's last known victim in this period, convincing her to work as a caregiver for his elderly father. Troutam disappeared and Robinson fabricated letters to her mother to conceal the crime. Over time, Robinson's vigilance waned and his ability to elude authorities diminished. By 1999, Law enforcement in Kansas and Missouri took notice as his name surfaced frequently in missing person cases. In June 2000, his arrest occurred at his La Signe, Kansas farm, prompted by a sexual battery complaint and another charge related to the theft of sex toys. The theft accusation provided investigators with the needed probable cause for search warrants. On his property, a task force discovered the decomposing bodies of two women identified as Lewicka and Troughton, within chemical drums. Across the state line in Missouri, a storage facility linked to Robinson yielded three more drums containing the remains of Bonner, Faith, and Faith's daughter. All five victims met a similar fate, succumbing to fatal blows to the head from a blunt instrument. In 2002, Robinson faced trial in Kansas for the murders of Troughton, Lewicka, and Stasi, alongside various other charges. Following the lengthiest criminal trial in Kansas history, he was convicted on all counts. For the murders of Troughton and Lewicka, he received the death penalty, while a life sentence was imposed for Stacy's murder due to the timing of the crime and Kansas's reinstatement of the death penalty. Additional sentences included 5 to 20 years for interfering with the parental custody of Stacy's child, 20 years for kidnapping Troughton, and 7 months for theft. Post his Kansas convictions, Robinson confronted murder charges in Missouri based on evidence discovered there. Given Missouri's pursuit of capital punishment, his attorneys sought to avoid a trial. The Missouri prosecutor, Chris Costa, insisted on Robinson leading authorities to the bodies of Stasi, Godfrey, and Clampett as a condition for any plea bargain. Robinson, uncooperative with investigators, declined. Pressured to make a deal due to potential weaknesses in the case, Costa faced challenges, including the absence of unequivocal evidence within his jurisdiction. Robinson, under the threat of a death sentence in Missouri and another capital murder trial in Kansas, faced pressure to plead guilty. As it became apparent that the victim's remains wouldn't be located without Robinson's cooperation, a compromise emerged. In a carefully orchestrated plea in October 2003, Robinson admitted that Costa possessed enough evidence to convict him of capital murder for the deaths of Godfrey, Clampett, Bonner, and the Faiths. Although technically considered a guilty plea, observers noted the absence of remorse or a specific acceptance of responsibility. Robinson received life sentences without parole for each of the five murders. In November 2015, the Kansas Supreme Court overturned the Troughton and Stacy murder convictions on technical grounds but upheld the Lewicka conviction and its accompanying death sentence. This marked the first instance since 1994, when capital punishment was reinstated in Kansas, that the state's highest court affirmed a death sentence. Robinson currently resides on death row at the El Dorado Correctional Facility in Kansas. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more true crime stories. Stay tuned for our next episode where we delve into another shocking case that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Stay safe and peace.